Are you ready to elevate your fantasy team? Here is Joy the Tooth with your IDP update. If it's not IDP, it's not fantasy football. All right, welcome to the IDP update. This is my week seven recap. Uh, first, I would like to start off by saying, if anybody was paying attention on Twitter about the IDP Invitational, uh, I have been, I was in a heated battle with one of my co-writers for our site, Dynasty Football Digest, um, Todd Foster. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at FF underscore banterman. Uh, we get into a crap talking debate for the, the entire week. I even got my daughter to um, play with her toy to shred his dreams. You can find it all on Twitter. It's, it's there. But I would like to say that I was victorious. I took down the banter man. Boy, did it come down in the last minute, though. I ended up, I think I won by five points. And it came down to the final game where he had uh, Aaron Donald, Jared Goff, and Daryl Henderson going. And I had Cooper Cup. And I went into the night up by like 30. And I ended up victorious, which was crazy. And I thought I th for sure that Aaron Donald had a sack at the, at the end of the game, but it ended up being Leonard Floyd. Thank the Lord. So that put me up to five and two, and I think third place in the division, and dropped Todd to four and three, and right in the middle of the pack now. Sorry, Todd, but it was a great battle, and I really enjoyed going up against you. I love the banter, man. <laughs> See what I did there. But um, yeah, everybody pay attention to the IDP Invitational. It's 9016 league, and uh, it's a nice introductory to IDP. I mean, it's. You can play some of the best names in the game. Uh, there's guys like Mike Waller, Tom Kisslenberry in there, Johnny the Greek, um, IDP dude. Um, yeah, man, there's so many, so many. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's so we do that, and then we have been asking people to no donate for our cause. This year it was – for Autism Speaks, and we raised over $2,000. So I'm hoping that people can join in. I mean, it's a free entry. We just ask that you donate. And, man, it's been a blast. It's been great. And it, it there's there's it's been very competitive. And I would like to say that the fans, a lot of you fans are fantastic. I'm In our division, there's a man, Brad Lovelock. He's undefeated after week seven and... Actually, you know, I think he lost week seven, but he's he's six and one, and he has been just his team has just been scoring like crazy. He was one of the top scorers in the league last week, and he still lost. But yeah, ID invitation, IDP Invitational. You can go on idpguys.org and you can sign up for the 2021 Invitational right now. So go ahead and do that. Um, right now, I'm gonna have take a quick break for our sponsors, and when we come back, we'll come back to the Injury Report. The Injury Report. All right, and now it's time for the Injury Report. All right, so we had some big injuries this week. Um, mainly one really big injury and then a couple of uh middle of the mid-range injuries uh landon collins out for the year with an achilles injury huge i had him ranked as my number four safety to start the season and he he was a little little off this year so far i mean it wasn't anything to write home about but he started this game great he came up with a safety so he had a sack in the end zone forced fumble but um, ended up with an Achilles injury, and he's going to be done for the year. So that's a big blow for people. Um, his replacement, whew, Carmen Curl, I think it is. Don't quote me on that. It's close. It's something like that. But, yeah, he, they're really digging deep to the barrel of safeties for that team. Um, his teammate, Montez Sweet, he, uh, he left with a concussion or concussion-like symptoms, so he's entering protocol. So just keep your eye on him this week if he's in your lineup to make sure he passes protocol. Um, Ronnie Harrison Jr. Some people have been waiting. Uh, my buddy Evan, is it 
he's he's been a uh, we've been talking a lot. He's a uh, he's a writer for uh, Dynasty Nerds. Um, you can find him on Twitter at ff evaluation. So it's uh, Evan Brown. Uh, he's he's a great dude. So check him out. And uh, but he's been sticking with Ronnie Harrison. So he drafted him early in the year in a league room together, and he's been sticking it out even though he hadn't been starting and he finally got Ronnie Harrison back and he made his first or second start this week. First huge impact. And he led the team in tackles, had a sack, had a fumble recovery. And then he got injured in the fourth quarter. Luckily it doesn't seem to be serious. Evan, he will be back. So I believe he's going to be starter moving forward. And he's looks like the best safety of the group in Cleveland. Um, Raven green, He's kind of a guy. I think it depends on matchup that he plays a lot. Um, he kind of he's a safety that moves up, plays a little bit of linebacker, but uh, his his playing time has been a little spotty this year. He's gone from anywhere from seventy percent of snaps down to like ten percent. So he he left the game with an oblique injury. Um, he's somebody you can leave on the waivers. He's kind of a guy. Eh. He's too hit or miss to, to be to rely on. So he's he's one of those deep league guys. Um, bad news for the Texans is their secondary isn't great as it is. And Bradley Roby just went down with a knee injury. We don't know the extent of the knee injury, but if he misses time, they're incredibly thin at, at corner. So I think their top corner at that point would be Vernon Hargreaves, who's just been a disappointment since he's been drafted in the first round by the Bucks. So good luck to the Texans. Um, Dakota Allen, he left as well, linebacker for the Jags. Uh, he left with an ankle injury. Uh, he wasn't a guy that was going to have long-term value anyway. He was more or less a, a filler until Miles Jack came back, and I believe Jack's going to come back this week. So I wouldn't worry too much about Dakota Allen. Um, Sidney Jones, another high-value draft pick, another first-round pick who just never really panned out too well in Philly. Uh, he's started coming on this year with Jacksonville. Uh, their their defensive backfield's a little banged up as well. Uh Sidney Jones came in his first game with his first start with the Jags. He had three tackles and four passes defended and he started playing well again this week and then uh he went out with a back injury so he's likely to miss some time. So um some big injuries to the defensive line of the Cardinals. Um Zach Allen, uh second year man out of Boston College, he's a defensive end. He left with a knee injury. Uh, he was having issues putting weight on it. Left, came back into the game, and after that, he, he just went directly to the locker room. Uh, him and uh, Jordan Phillips, kind of uh, those low-key prize acquisitions for uh, the Cardinals. Uh, after having a breakout with Buffalo last year, he uh, he left the game with a hamstring injury, so I don't expect him coming back this week. They are both questionable, but I wouldn't put my money on it. Um, and then lastly, um, Shaq Griffin, the number one corner in um, Seattle. Um, even as their number one corner, he's really just like a number two corner. So that secondary is attackable very badly. Uh, they give up the most points to receivers by far. Um, so that, that secondary just got even like whoever's playing Seattle this week, who's playing Seattle this week? I don't even remember, but if you have a wide receiver, play him because he's going to score. All right, so that's it for the injury report. That was not too bad. Landon Collins, though. <laughs> Sorry for anybody that owns him. I only had one share of him. Thank gosh. All right, so now we're going to go to the who's hot, who's not segment. Who's hot, who's not. All right, who's hot? My man, Devin White. Woo-wee. I have a couple shares of him, but he was huge this week. I had 11 tackles, nine of them solo, three tackles for a loss, three sacks, and a forced fumble. Wow. I have him... Uh... So I'm in a league with um, 
the guys from the IDP Army, Jordan Reigns, um, Jared Gray, the IDP Army Chief, or Army General. No, it's the Army Chief, I think it is. And then uh, Dynasty Chef Steve. I, I'm in a league with them called IDP Army. And uh, I actually just so happen to have all three of them in a row. So I, And I took Jordan Reigns out two weeks ago. This past week, I took out Jared Gray, thanks to Devin White. And I played Dynasty Chef Steve this week. I'm going for the trifecta. So I don't know. There could be a new general of the IDP Army, guys. I'm sorry. I don't mean to rain on your parade, but all three of you in a row, if I can take out Steve, something to be said. Um, another guy who was hot, Jerry Hughes, old man Hughes. Uh, he hasn't done anything this year. <laughs> I don't think he's a guy you're going to really want to uh, pick up yet. But um, he had six tackles, five solo, two tackles for a loss, two sacks, a pass defended, an interception, and a forced fumble. That's a mouthful. Oh, he was, he looked like his old self. He looked like old disruptive Jerry Hughes. But, uh, I mean, like I said, it's kind of a rotation there, uh, defensive line for Buffalo. Hughes hasn't done much this year at all. So I think he's just a guy, I mean, if you need a spot start in a deep league, go for it. But I don't, he's not somebody I'm going to target. Um, Buda Baker, I apologized earlier on Twitter. I mean, I still had him ranked number five. I should have had him at least three. But I figured with Devondre Campbell coming over and uh, the drafting of Isaiah Simmons, who think the Lord is finally seeing some field time, and he's, he's making an impact. But I thought with those additions – um, Buda Baker would regress a little bit. Not even close. He's actually progressing. He's playing better than he has. And this week was just the same. He had a second interception this season, second inter for two straight weeks now. But he had 14 tackles, 11 solo, a tackle for a loss, a pass defended, and a pick. Unfortunately for him, he got he almost had a touchdown, but he got run down. Crazy rundown just shows the athletic ability of DK Metcalf and the size of him. If, you, if nobody's seen that YouTube, the DK DK Metcalf rundown, Muda Baker with the pick at like the five yard line, and he's got a clear pass to the end zone. He's going, and here comes out of nowhere DK Metcalf full speed and just takes him down at the five. And I believe it held them to just a field goal. Unfortunately, Arizona ended up coming away with a win, but um, yeah, Buda Baker. He should be number one right now. I'm sorry. He is. He's he's amazing. Um, Jan Brown showing signs of life. He's been a little quiet this year, linebacker for Tennessee. Um, he had eight tackles, seven solo, and he had four passes defended and an interception. So when he came into the league, he was known more of a um, like a pass rushing run stopping linebacker. But over the past two seasons, his um, his pass defense has been fantastic. His coverage has been great, and this season even even more so. So. He's really turning into and blossoming into a nice complete linebacker. It's just it just so happens he plays next to another very, very good linebacker in Rashawn Evans, and they kind of just split stats. So it's not that Jayon Brown's not playing well. It's just he's got another linebacker also playing well with him. Um, Keanu Neal truthers. Finally, he's got to shine a light for the old Keanu Neal. Uh, he had 11 tackles, 10 solo, a tackle for loss, and he had a sack. That was nice. That was very nice to see. Um, it's I, I really hope that Keanu Neal's getting back into form. I hope the injuries are past him, and I hope he can finish strong. Because, man, the guy's talented as anything. It's just injuries have just derailed his career the, to start. But, I mean, the talent is obvious. So kudos to him. Um. Jamar Taylor, journeyman corner uh, for the 49ers this year. Uh, he had a big game last week, uh, picking off Cam Newton twice. He had three tackles, two passes defended, and two interceptions. So if you were taking a flyer on him at corner, and you might want to again this week. Um, who are they playing? Oh, I think it's actually they're playing San Francisco. Well, and I'll tell you in two seconds. But anywho. Um, Jamar Taylor, yeah, he's uh, he's playing mainly because a killer Witherspoon is not really living up to any hype. Um, and Richard Sherman's injured, Emmanuel Mosley and Jason Verrett have both been playing well, but Taylor's coming in, and uh, K1 Williams is also out, but he's almost back. But 
Uh, Jamar Taylor. I mean, he's okay. Well, I think the Niners are playing the Seahawks. I'm just sorry. I'm just kind of brains a little scattered. I was with the kid all day. Love that kid. Love the fact that she talked crap to Todd too. <laughs> um, Colcom. Uh, finally, he came back and played his first action last week, had five tackles or four tackles and one for a loss. Um, this week, he had five more tackles, four solo, one tackle for a loss, a sack, a pass defended, and an interception. He is the linebacker to own in Washington. I'm sorry, John Bostic owners. You had a nice start of the season, but his stats are, are starting to drop, and uh, Holcomb is definitely a much better playmaker than John Bostic. So uh, Holcomb is a guy you should go scoop up now. Uh, hopefully some of you did like me last week when you saw him playing and saw him, he actually played well. But after this week, you definitely need to scoop him up before somebody else does. Um, and then guy filling in, becoming the primary tackler in Pittsburgh, Vince Williams. Uh, he's kind of, when he's the primary tackler, he's kind of a guy to look for because he he can come up with some high tackle numbers, but he's also got great pass rushing ability. So he adds that that sack upside. Uh, this week was evidence of it. He had 10 tackles, nine solo, two tackles for a loss and a sack. I mean, the guy can get into the backfield. And when he's your primary tackler, I mean, he's if he can come up with like six, seven tackles, there's a good chance he can do that and add a sack in there too. So he's kind of a, a nice name to finish off the year with Devin Bush out. Um, and then Ryan Harrison, who I talked about earlier, he had the big game that I talked about. Um, Malik Reed, second straight game with two sacks. He had five, or he's the defensive end slash outside linebacker, right now playing outside linebacker for the Broncos. Uh, he's filling in for Von Miller. Uh, he had five tackles, four solo, two tackles for a loss, and two sacks. I mean, it's two straight weeks. So, I mean, I was a little, I was a little hesitant because he was behind Jeremiah Akochu to start. But it looks like Reed's taking that starting position, and he's starting to run with it too. Um, another guy who I have been so down on his entire career, but his past two games have just been fantastic. Hassan Reddick. So Chandler Jones goes out torn. Oh, I think it was a torn bicep. He goes out, and then the defense just gets creative, and they're just throwing together all these hybrid packages and blitz packages with Hassan Reddick, and. He's been phenomenal. This was his second straight week, and this week he had 11 tackles, five solo, three tackles for a loss, and a sack. You're talking sack number or tackle numbers to add sacks. I mean, if if they keep dialing up these packages and you him in a hybrid role, outside linebacker slash inside linebacker. I mean, he's got experience both positions. He could be huge to finish off the season for you. So that's that's who's hot. Those those guys were huge this week. Let's talk about who let you down. Who let you down? Um, to a smaller extent, a couple of guys. Um, Justin Simmons, a safety for the Broncos. He only had four tackles, nothing special. Four tackles, three solo. Uh, he's kind of a guy, especially, I mean, that, that the center of that team, the, the linebacking group isn't, to, they're, they're nothing to write home about. I mean, AJ Johnson's great. Jules, he's spotty. So I figured Simmons would come up with a couple more tackles, but this week he was he was just a little lame. Uh, Trey Flowers has been kind of a disappointment for uh, for the Lions, which is possibly a reason why they went and just acquired Everson Griffin. Uh, this week he had just two assisted tackles, and he had a pass defended and a fumble recovery, but. I mean, he, he just doesn't seem to be getting the pressure that he, he usually does and that he did last year. Um, a big guy who was added in waivers a couple weeks back, Nasir Adderley, second-year guy, second-year safety for the Chargers, filling in for uh, Derwin James. Uh, he just had a lowly three tackles, nothing special. Same with Jordan Whitehead for the Bucks, safety for the Bucks, also just three tackles. Um, to keep it with the safeties, uh, Justin Reed, four tackles, just two solo. Trash. Another trash week. Uh, and Jesse Bates. Yeah, I own a lot of Jesse Bates. He had three tackles, two solo, and a tackle for a loss. Um, 
looking at some defensive ends, uh, Frank Clark, just two tackles and a fumble recovery. He's kind of spotty too, but he's been better as of late. But I don't know. I'm not a big Frank Clark fan. Um, Dante Fowler has been such a letdown this year for uh, for the Falcons. Uh, three tackles, two solo, and a tackle for a loss. His sack numbers are way down from last year. And it just goes to show the, the Aaron Donald effect. I'm sorry to say it. That's what it is. It's the Aaron Donald effect. I mean, look at Leonard Floyd. He left the Bears, came to the to the Rams, and he's having a better season now than Fowler's. And Fowler last season had, what, 12 and a half sacks, 13 sacks for the Rams? Nope. It's the Aaron Donald effect. It's a thing. Um, Max Crosby, he's also been a letdown. I'm going to have to shout out Mike Woller for this one. I mean, he kind of called it. He said that that Max Crosby is going to regress quite a bit, and he has. His sack numbers are down. Uh, this past week he had four tackles, but only one solo and one tackle for a loss. He just doesn't seem to be getting the pressure he was getting last year. Um, Matt Milano. He played. He's been a little lame with a leg injury, Ham, hamstring, I believe. Uh, he played, but he only had two assists and a half a sack. Not, not normal Matt Milano numbers. And then big waiver wire of the week, Robert Spillane. I mean, people picked him up after he filled in when Devin Bush went down. He did not impress. Three tackles, two solo. That hurt. And that's it for who's hot and who's not. Now to get to our most important segment of the week, the waiver wire. Waivers. All right. Checking out waivers. Let's start. Let's start at the line. All right. I talked about earlier. Malik Reed, two straight weeks with two sacks, and he's filling in. He's got Bradley Chubb on the other side of him. Bradley Chubb's a pressure machine. Malik Reed showed some signs of life last year, and he's really coming on strong right now, um, especially if you're in leagues where he's used as an edge designation. Pick him up. If you need help at linebacker, he's worth it. I mean, he's he's coming up with some decent tackle numbers as well, coming up with, with sacks too. So Malik Reed's a nice add. Um, Let's see, not much at the line. I, I, we'll go with a uh, Hassan Reddick too. So I was talking about his past two games, right? So since the Chandler Jones injury, his last two games, sixteen tackles, five tackles for a loss, three sacks, a pass defended, and five QB hits. That's awesome. If you can get eight tackles, one and a half sacks on average, that's phenomenal. So, I mean, keep dialing up those packages, Cardinals, because you're making Hassan Reddick look phenomenal. Um, so this apparently is the week of picking up linebackers, so I'll get to them last. Uh, one safety who I think is worth a pickup this week, who I've never been big on, but he always seems to be there. Uh, Daniel Sorensen, safety for uh, Kansas City. I think everybody's just hoping he goes away so Juan Thornhill becomes a thing, but he just won't. Um, ever since week three, he's been averaging at least six tackles a game, and he just had another great game this last week. So he's been consistently good, even for IDP, and he's probably still on most of your waiver wires, especially if you're in 12 or 14 team leagues. I mean, I'm in some 16 team leagues, that have 53-man rosters, and he's still available in some of those, or he was. But, yeah, pick up Daniel Sorensen. Uh, let's get to the linebackers. So a couple of guys who I already talked about. Oh, I missed a safety, sorry. Um, Marcel Harris for the 49ers. Um, both Jimmy Ward and Jaquiski Tart are, were out this game, this last game with injuries, and it's possible they miss out this week too. And Harris came in, and he played quite well. I mean, nothing amazing. But he had six tackles, six tackles, five solos. So he he plays and he produces enough for your bye week filler if you're really thin at, at a safety or defensive back. He's worth a look. 
Uh, let's get to the linebackers now. Um, let's see. We'll start with Cole Holcomb, who I already talked about. Uh, in his two games since his return, he's got 11 tackles, two tackles for a loss, sack, interception, pass defended, and two QB hits. Uh, he played 67% of snaps two weeks ago, and uh, he played 70% this past week. So he's going to be the dominant linebacker in Washington. Um, and then, like I talked about, Vince Williams, if he's available, grab Vince Williams because he's got that sack up, upside to go with his primary tackle ability. Um, and then uh, Alex Singleton, he seems to be the actual linebacker to own in Philly after Nate Jerry. I mean, Trent Edwards is going to come back this week, but I don't know if, if they're going to uh, – if they're going to replace him. Singleton's played all right. He's played all right. So, I don't know. He's worth depth. I mean, these are deep ads. Most of these are deep ads. So, uh, last guy, um, Devontae Downs. So, he actually started week one for the uh, Giants next to um, Blake Martinez. And he lost the starting job. And then to – and Tay Crowder went with it. Tay Crowder just got injured and after having himself a big game. And Downs filled in. Uh, when he filled in, he had five tackles and a QB hit. So, I mean, he's – he produced. He produced. And he's probably got a, a job moving forward because I think Tay Crowder just went on IR. And David Mayo is just purely special teams at this point. So, if you need – Linebacker depth, Hassan Reddick, Malik Reed if he's a linebacker, Vince Williams, Devontae Downs, and Alex Singleton, all guys who could possibly start for you this week and put a decent production. Uh, Hassan Reddick won't play this week. He's in a bye. I believe Cole Holcomb is as well. But that just works out more in your favor because that means both of those guys are available. So that'll be that's it for this week of the IDP update. I'd like to thank you guys all for tuning in. Uh, Todd Foster, FF Banterman, I'd like to thank you for the fun week of IDP Invitational Trash Talk. Um, I'm, I'm glad anybody who listens to this, thank you so much. I, it just, I do this just for fun, man. This is great. Um, you can find all my written work at Dynasty Football Digest, idpguys.org. Um, you can tune in and pay attention to the IDP Invitational. Check out leaderboards and stuff um we put that on there every now and then we have all sorts of tools at idpguys.org um we're talking matchup charts me and idp do do giant of the greek does corner streaming cornerback streaming articles i do defensive line streaming articles hollywood does his his uh stock updates who's up who's down zach magley does the injury report kyle k belf does the waivers um <sighs> And I know I'm going to forget some, but I mean, the guys are just, the team is unbelievable. And we have so much content. Like Johnny the Greek likes to say, and it, it's just, it, it's kind of true because we're suffocating you in content. He says, IDP guys, where we waterboard you with IDP content. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you again next week. Have a nice night. This has been a collaboration between the Big Three Network and the Writer Digest Network. Follow at Big Three Network on Twitter to find more great audio podcasts and subscribe to the Rider Digest Network on YouTube for tons of league winning fantasy football video shows.